According to Science Magazine, nearly 13 million tons of plastic waste end up in the world's oceans every year, and this is one of the most serious environmental problems of our time. But already in the world, there are companies that not only offer different ways to clean the ocean but also successfully implement them. Let's talk about the most notable projects. The Ocean Cleanup This is perhaps the most famous ocean cleanup project that was born in 2011 when a 16-year-old Dutch schoolboy with Croatian roots, Boyan Slat, decided to go scuba diving in Greece. At depth, he saw a picture that shocked him, there was more plastic in the sea than fish. While studying the problem, Boyan learned that garbage collection using ships and nets is ineffective and even harmful to the marine ecosystem. Then he created a school project, a mechanized plastic trap using ocean currents. And in 2012, Boyan spoke with him at TEDx. This is how the history of the ocean cleanup began. Thanks to crowdfunding, it was possible to raise $90,000 and, together with scientists, conduct a large-scale study of the problem. The re-fundraising has already brought in $2.1 million, and it has even been called the most successful NGO crowdfunding campaign in history. The team tested and improved prototypes for almost four years, and in 2016 the 100-meter waste bin was tested in real conditions. The device looks like a giant U-shaped plastic tube floating with an underwater skirt. It collects garbage like a coastline, garbage lingers on it, and every couple of months it is collected and delivered to the shore by ship. The traps have already shown their effectiveness, and in 2021 the team plans to launch 60 traps at once in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. In parallel with this, work is underway on the project The Interceptor, the purpose of which is to catch garbage on the way to the ocean, in rivers. It is a floating, self-contained solar-powered platform that lets water through and traps debris. The Ocean Cleanup plans to place platforms in the channels of 1,000 rivers, thereby reducing the flow of plastic into the ocean by 80% by 2025. Seeds, collecting garbage in rivers. The idea of collecting garbage not in the ocean, but in rivers is considered one of the most promising. Since 2016, two Italian engineers have been working on it, Fabio Dalmondi and Moro Nardaki. In 2016, Dalmonte researched waste management in Jakarta and came up with blue barriers, river barriers that prevent waste from entering the ocean. The company he founded together with Nardaki was named Seeds, Sea Defense Solution, and in 2019 the garbage barrier was tested on the Limone River in Italy, confirming its performance. In 2020-2030, Seeds plans to install barriers on 10 rivers that according to research, enter the ocean 85% of all plastic waste, Yangtze, Nile, Ganges, Indus, Yellow River, Aihe, Pearl River, Amur, Niger, and the Mekong. Seeds has already won the prestigious WWF award and has negotiated the installation of barriers in Indonesia, China, Scotland, and Italy. Mare Circulators Automated garbage collection technologies are developing very quickly, but manual labor is still an equally effective way. The Mare Circulaires Eco Project, sponsored by the Coca-Cola Foundation, was created by the Spanish government and three non-profit organizations in 2018, and already in 2019, several thousand volunteers manually cleaned 84 beaches in Spain and Portugal. Fishermen from 12 ports across the Mediterranean also contributed by collecting marine plastic waste. At the same time, the Dutch company Ionica Technologies presented a technology for processing collected waste into safe raw materials, from which Coca-Cola made a trial series of bottles at the end of 2019. Despite the fact that the circulation was only 300 copies, these were the first bottles in history using recycled marine plastic. And in the near future, the company plans to bottle drinks from its portfolio in such bottles. It would be strange if no one in the world thought of a vacuum cleaner to collect ocean debris. And it happened, the British company Bluebird Marine Systems, BMS, launched the non-profit SeaVax project in 2015. Their invention is truly a giant marine vacuum cleaner on a floating platform with solar panels. The money for the project was raised through crowdfunding, but due to economic difficulties, BMS transferred the project to the Cleaner Ocean Foundation, which is still involved in it. The final model is a 44-meter trimaran with a 13.5-meter bin that sucks plastic into a huge 150-ton container. Now the fund is looking for companies interested in this development in order to release it to the market. Seabin. Why not make a small floating marine litter basket? This idea came to the minds of Andrew Turton and Pete Seglinski, shipbuilders and ocean lovers. In 2013, they set up Seabin, literally Sea Basket, in Australia and started working on the idea in detail. Over the years, the project has gone through many alterations and tests. 
In January 2016, Sieben raised $276,000 through crowdfunding, and in November 2018, Time Magazine included the project in the list of the best inventions of the year. The principle of operation of Sieben is very simple, water is sucked from the surface by an electric pump and passes through a waste bag that retains any debris, including microplastics particles up to 2 mm in size. The filtered water is poured back into the harbor and the plastic accumulates in the basket. Sieben can catch almost 4 kilograms of garbage a day, that's up to 1.4 tons per year, while maintaining it costs no more than $3 per day. In August 2019, 716 such devices were installed in the harbors of 50 countries around the world. By February 2020, thanks to them more than 575 tons of garbage have already been collected, not so little for such a crop. Reef Sun Shield An ultrafine sun shield created by Australian scientists could be used to protect the Great Barrier Reef from further coral bleaching. By spraying a protective layer onto the surface of the water, researchers believe parts of the reef could be shielded from sunlight and effectively cool. While it's still early days, and the trials have been on a small scale, the testing shows the film reduced light by up to 30%, said Anna Marsden, from the Great Barrier Reef Foundation GBRF. Created using calcium carbonate and 100% biodegradable, the film is some 50,000 times thinner than human hair, according to the GBRF. It's designed to sit on the surface of the water above the corals, rather than directly on the corals, to provide an effective barrier against the sun. A team of scientists, led by the pioneer of Australia's polymer banknotes, tested the protective layer on several different types of coral and found the film decreased bleaching in most species. Scientists believe the film has the potential to prevent further damage to the World Heritage listed site, which has suffered significant bouts of coral bleaching caused by rising sea temperatures and increasing ocean acidity. While the shield is not intended to be a solution for the entire reef, which stretches 348,000 square kilometers, Marsden said it could be applied to smaller, high-risk areas. The concept needs more work and testing before it gets to that stage, but it's an exciting development at a time when we need to explore all possible options to ensure we have a great barrier reef for future generations. Reef Cubes Reef cubes are versatile cube-like marine structures that protect subsea and coastal assets or can be used as moorings, but also intentionally benefit nature by providing a hard substrate and habitat complexity. They are made from 98% recycled materials using an innovative marine non-toxic binder, marinetcrete, and have a 90% lower carbon footprint than traditional Portland cement-based alternatives. They are proven to enrich biodiversity and abundance due to their size, shape, surface pH, complexity, and internal chambers, which rapidly become colonized and used as spawning and nursery grounds. Every marine project can now leave a positive marine legacy by switching from Portland cement-based products to low-carbon footprint marinecrete technology that contains zero plastics, and they are designed to be left in situ forever, removing high decommissioning cost risks. RCs have the potential to reduce the life cycle cost of subsea mattress cable protection by up to 50%. EC Uncrete EC Oncrete seeks to address the deterioration of marine environments by redesigning the most widely used substance on earth after water, concrete. Their platform centers around three sustainable concrete technologies that harness biological processes for the benefit of the environment, while improving structural performance. First, the development of their environmentally sensitive and bio-enhanced admixture distinguishes the composition of their concrete from traditional manufacturers. Second, their advanced casting technologies and form liner design create surface textures that mimic natural features in rock and coral and enhance biological recruitment, providing valuable protection. Lastly, their 3D designs provide desirable biological needs specific to each site. EC Oncrete solutions reduce the environmental carbon footprint of ports, marinas, coastal protection infrastructure, and urban waterfront projects by up to 80% while adding to their structural integrity. Their products will transform the way future coastlines look and function by replacing barren, gray, urban coastlines and waterfronts with high-performance, resilient, and blue-green infrastructure. In 2019, EC Oncrete was named one of Time's 100 Best Inventions of the Year. Coral IVF A coral fertility treatment that was designed to help in healing damaged areas on the Great Barrier Reef in Australia is showing promising signs of success, according to the lead scientist of the study. For coral IVF, the scientists used a process similar to what is done in human IVF. In a yearly coral spawning event, the team collected millions of coral eggs and sperm, 
which they then grew into coral larvae before redistributing them to the reef. The team deposited millions of coral larvae at Heron Island and One Tree Island 18 months ago. With this process, the scientists improved the chances that coral will latch onto the reef, instead of leaving the floating spawn to do it by themselves. According to Harrison, he drew inspiration from fellow scientists in the Philippines who have been successful with coral IVF in the recovery of coral reefs damaged by dynamite fishing. Harrison said that the coral IVF project will need to be scaled up to create a bigger impact on saving the Great Barrier Reef. Harrison's program will not be alone, though, with Australia's government allotting $500 million for initiatives to save the Great Barrier Reef. Other projects focused on saving the reef include a film-like shield that protects the corals from the sun and laboratory-bred super corals that are more tolerant to climate change and global warming. Sea Chair by Studio Swine Studio Swine first presented the idea in collaboration with Kieran Jones at the Royal College of Art show in 2011 and has since simplified the process to build the chairs using a small factory onboard vessels. They have released a manual so others can build the chairs too. Plastic caught in fishing nets or found washed up on the shore is sorted according to color and chopped into small bits, then melted at 130 degrees centigrade in a DIY furnace. Some are then squashed between two flat slabs of heavy metal or stone to create the seat, while more is scraped into a mold formed from bent scraps of aluminum. Cooled and solidified by the seawater, the seat and three legs are then scraped with a knife to tidy the edges and screwed together to create the sea chair. Studio Swine has also designed a mobile food stall for cooking and selling pig heads and glasses made from human hair. The United Nations estimates some 100 million tons of plastic waste to be contaminated in the world's oceans, a proportion of which washes up on coastlines across the globe. Last year Japan had over 200,000 tons of plastic debris wash up along its shores. This abundance of plastic presents an opportunity where the material is delivered by the sea to coasts where it can be processed to make new products with the intention of removing the plastic from the marine environment for good. The open source design uses readily available materials and basic DIY skills to enable the creation of a sea chair. Sponge Suit This is probably the strangest ocean cleaner you've ever seen. At first glance, this 3D printed sponge swimsuit is just an erotic little thing well suited for tanning. But there are also hidden possibilities in it that you don't expect from a swimsuit. The most important component from an environmental standpoint is the pollution absorbing sponge material that absorbs harmful elements from the water while you swim. This tiny bikini is capable of picking up dirt 25 times its own weight and thereby protecting water bodies by removing dirt. The sponge swimsuit is a prototype designed to allow people to think about the inactive cleaning methods that work while we are relaxing on the coast. Seaware, the garbage removing sea scraper. One of our planet's most discouraging features is the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, GPGP. The GPGP, also known as the Eastern Pacific Garbage Patch and the Pacific Trash Vortex, lies in the middle of the North Pacific Subtropical Gyre, a circular ocean current perfect for capturing debris. The GPGP conjures up an image of a floating landfill, but the debris is largely composed of microplastics, plastic pieces between 0.3 and 5 mm in diameter, and visible to the naked eye. The exact size of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch is impossible to measure, but it's enormous. And because the GPGP lies so far out in the ocean, no single nation will take credit for the mess. An honorable mention in the 2014 Evolo Skyscraper competition brings a unique solution to the problem of cleaning the GPGP, seaware, a garbage sea scraper. This cleaning attachment takes care of the environment to the next level. The sea tower not only filters out plastic and other debris from the ocean water while sailing but also generates energy for its needs using solar panels. With this combination, the seaware demonstrates the capability of a self-sustaining cleaning system that has been modeled specifically for the conditions of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. If built, it will be a gigantic structure with a drainage cavity 550 meters in diameter and 300 meters in height. Whether this will be enough to deal with all the plastic waste in the Pacific remains questionable. The Manta Under the banner of Manta Innovation, the technical team develops a range of groundbreaking solutions against plastic pollution. Manta is a first-of-a-kind processing ship is designed to collect, treat and repurpose large volumes of floating plastic debris present in highly polluted waters, along the coasts, in estuaries, and the mouths of large rivers. The Manta will also host other scientific missions on board, and when in port will hold educational and learning conferences for the general public. 
The Manta extracts both floating macro waste and smaller debris from 10 mm upwards and up to 1 meter deep. Depending on the density and closeness of the layers of waste, the Manta can collect between 1 to 3 tons of waste per hour, with the objection to collect 5 to 10,000 tons per year. It can operate for up to 20 hours a day, 7 days a week. The Manta is the first self-sufficient workboat capable of processing 90 to 95% of the collected plastic waste whilst at sea. This is all thanks to an innovative, eco-friendly system. The Manta's primary purpose is converting waste into energy, as opposed to storing it, as this increases the ship's weight and energy consumption. The waste that isn't immediately repurposed is packaged into big bags and stored on the deck or the hulls before it is eventually converted into energy. The storage capacity for plastic waste is 140 cubic meters, around 50 tons. In addition to this, there are two 33 cubic meters containers, one for drift nets and one for dangerous waste. In rare cases where the waste isn't converted into energy, it is entrusted to local waste treatment or recycling plants during stopovers. Thanks for watching. If you liked our video please consider liking it and subscribing to our channel.